The Unshackled Waves, episode 27. Shackled Waves podcast. I'm Tim Wilms here for this week's review episode. Uh, now, Parliament, uh, Federal Parliament resumed this week, and of course, uh, this was when uh, Cory Bernardi uh, finally ended months of speculation and announced that he was leaving the Liberal Party to form his own party, Australian Conservatives. The reaction of MPs inside the Liberal Party is to uh, call his decision a betrayal, uh, though it's been welcomed by many Conservative voters who for a long time have felt disillusioned by the, the leftward drift of the Liberal Party, not just under Malcolm Turnbull, but at the state level and also in its, in, its internal structure. Uh, the impact that Australian Conservatives will have on the political landscape in the near future will be the focus of our show uh, for today uh, with my co-host, my co-editor-in-chief of The Unshackled, Sukith Fernando. Welcome back to the show. Thanks, to everybody. It's good to be back. Uh, so it was the big news this week, uh, Cory Bernardi's uh, announcement. He announced it. Uh, he announced his resignation from the Liberal Party on Tuesday. Uh, at at twelve thirty, and he t he talked about how Liberal Party no longer reflected the values that uh, it, it had stood for when he first joined. Uh, I, I for one was he, he described himself as he was reluctant but both relieved, and I, I would describe myself as happy that he finally uh, broke free of the the shackles from the Liberal Party. Yeah, I'm actually very glad that he did because um, I really wanted him to and you know, his voters, many of his voters wanted him to do it. So um, I'm relieved um, and I'm happy that he did that because now it means he can actually pursue his conservative um, goals on his own without any intervention from the now progressive Liberal Party. And of course, the 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 reaction of Liberal and National MPs is, like I said, to uh, call it a betrayal. Uh, they've called him a, a rat. Uh, for those who don't know, ratting is when you uh, leave the political party that that got you got you into parliament. So they've been very scathing, and it's and it's not just been the progressive uh, ministers such as Simon Birmingham who called it a dog act. Uh, it's also been even conservative Scott Morrison and uh, Peter Dutton who who've critici criticised uh, his decision. And I've and I've also seen the various Liberal Party hacks online saying, "Oh, this is uh, such a uh, betrayal." He should he should resign his his Senate seat. So they've really gone uh, gone in hard after him. And there was a story uh, the day after he made his announcement that Turnbull is vowed to crush the party. Yeah, I mean they need to understand that people voted for Cory Bernardi. People knew who he was and you know what he stood for. So they need to understand that. People didn't really vote for for him because he was he was a liberal. He, they voted for him because of his views, and you know it makes sense that he's still staying in the party. And you know, they're overreacting. Um, they they call him the traitor, but the thing is, the real traitor is the Liberal Party itself because they're moving away from that original conservative um, platform they used to have. Um, Malcolm Turnbull is quite progressive. Um, he's with. For example, with the climate change, he d he did promise a plebiscite that was good, um, but with climate change, you know, with safe schools, he has been very progressive. Um, so the real traitor is the Liberal Party, and they, I don't think it's legitimate for them to criticize Cory Bernardi for leaving because you know he left because you betrayed the Australian people. Yeah, I wrote I wrote an article that was published uh, on the Unshackled ju uh, just this morning, talk talking about uh, the ethics of uh, Cory Bernardi's defection. Uh, because yes, the the argument is that he was elected on a Liberal Party ticket. People thought they were getting a a Liberal Party senator. Uh, yet uh, yet he's he's got gone and left now. But the thing is, as I pointed out in my article, that. 
uh, a lot of a lot of people uh, would have voted for the Liberal Party, thinking they were going to get a somewhat conservative government, which which they which they haven't got under Malcolm Turnbull. So the Liberal Party is the one betraying voters, and also there would have uh, he would have been pre-selected by. The, uh, by Liberal Party members, he was number two on the ticket because of his conser his conservative views, and and I I believe that there's a lot of Liberal Party members who will probably uh, leave the Liberal Party themselves and, and go and join him. So I don't think the only people that he's really betrayed are the people who have never liked him anyway. Yeah, I mean, I think I think they already know that they're just you know, I think the Liberal Party people who are con um, criticizing Corey already know that they're hacks. Um, they're just doing it for, um, just to justify themselves and just to sort of make them look like the noble people, the righteous people who are still true to their platform. Well, first of all, you're not true to your platform, and second, you know, you can't criticize him. Um, and and yes, he was. I mean, he, you, you said he was number two as well. So you know, it just shows that he did the right decision ultimately because people expected um, some conservatism. They didn't get conservatism, so, you know, that's what happens when they don't get what they want. I haven't seen any true conservatives uh, online criti criticise his, his decision. It's more just been, like I, like I said, the, the hacks who just spew the... The Liberal Party line, uh, as, uh, but the the argument that's always put forward by people who say you know you should stay in the Liberal Party is that uh, you should change from within. You should it's better to be part a part of the team than not in it at all when you when you don't have any 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 influence. But Cory Bernardi has been in the Liberal Party for for over 20 years. He's been a senator for 10 years. I mean, he's tried the change from within. I mean, he was sacked uh, from the front bench twice for being being too conservative. I mean, he's been publicly ridiculed by his colleagues for, for many years. So he's, he's, try, he's tried that method and he, he wasn't getting anywhere. Yeah, the truth is you really can't fix the Liberal Party anymore. People don't like it anymore. People vote people vote for it because, you know, it was a bit better than Labour. That was it. Um, you know, people want actual an actual right wing party. And yes, um with regards to the online sphere, yes, you, you can tell that most conservatives were supportive. I mean, if you look at the comments on the under the Australian, under the SMH, then you can tell that people were actually very supportive. Um and the people who weren't supportive were the ones who actually hated him in the first place. Um all the progressive liberals who just hated Cory Bernardi in the first place. Um and that just that says something. Yeah. And it's also the reaction of the, the mainstream media has also been uh, something to uh, behold as well. I mean, uh, m most of the left-leaning media, they've ridiculed him uh, starting the Australian Conservatives, saying, oh, it'll never go anywhere, uh, n nobody cares about what he does, so they're, they're all having a laugh about it. But I, I think that the party has, has got real, real potential. They do have real potential. And let's remember, it was the same media who were saying Brexit won't happen, the same media who said Donald Trump won't be nominated, and the same media who said Trump won't win. So, you know, the thing is, the media is saying Corey won't be successful. I think we can already tell the future by the fact that the media is saying he can't make it. You know, they said the same thing about Trump. So, you know, if anything, the media is sort of like, um, it's like a prophecy, isn't it? That the opposite of what they say is coming true. Um, with, that happened with Trump, and so that will happen with Corey. Uh, I, I, I put up a post on Facebook saying, could Cory Bernardi be Prime Minister by 2019? I mean, <laughs> uh, because there's that famous video of Ann Coulter saying that Donald Trump uh, had the best chance of becoming president back in 2015, and the audience laughed at her. But of course, who's laughing now? So yeah. nothing, nothing's, uh, uh, nothing's uh, beyond beyond reach in this in this era. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, we let's look at let's look at the past, and you know, all the mainstream media were making fun of the the new right wing, sort of, you know, saying you won't win, but you know, they won. And I just want to say, I just want to go back to the um to the liberal hacks, and I just want to say that um in the mainstream media, they in ABC, James, it was James Patterson, I believe his name, he gave an interview, and you know, he said he was very disappointed. He wasn't supportive at all. And I was very surprised he said that because he was he's one of the most 
you know, conservative people in the party, um, or at least according to the mainstream media, he's one of the most conservative. So I was surprised that James Patterson would actually, you know, condemn Cory Bernardi's act. I thought he would be more, um, you know, supportive of that. And the thing is, the mainstream media was using that very well. And they were like, oh, look, even a conservative, even one of the most conservative people in the party are criticizing him. Um, and I thought that was quite disappointing. Well, it's because he's an enemy now. I mean, he's, in, in their eyes, he's ratted on the party, so he's done the dirty on them, so he must be destroyed by by any means yeah. necessary. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, the only uh, the only two people that uh, that didn't really, like, go after Cory Bernardi were Tony Abbott, who he blamed uh, Malcolm Turnbull for not encouraging Cory Bernardi to stay, but we actually know there was an article uh, in the in the Fairfax uh, websites that it was actually Tony uh, Tony Abbott's betrayal of uh, Cory Bernardi's private conversation that that se- sealed the deal for Cory Bernardi to leave. So sort of Tony Abbott's uh, try, trying to have it both ways a bit, and also uh, a Victorian MLC Bernie Finn who's who's posted that you know, he still considers Cory Bernardi a a friend and, and is disappointed that uh, he felt that he had to leave, but it just it just shows the the current crisis in the Liberal Party. So sort of understanding, but not not he's not going to uh, uh, jump and join him. Yeah, he won't. And um, you know, I I prefer that in comparison to everything else they've said. Um, I do know that George Christian George Christensen um, was told of this, um, but and he. He said that he would actually consider leaving during the Christmas New Year period, but it looks like he hasn't done it. Um, but George Christensen was sort of in his side. Um, you know, they're very similar um, as well. His core is a bit, a little bit more elitist. George is a bit more um, populist, I suppose. But you know, they were on one side. But George hasn't done it. Um, sad to see, but I, I would have liked more people to join him. I think many will join him later on. I mean, that's, that's, the signs are showing that even many conservatives in the party are getting a bit disillusioned by what's happening now. Um, well, only the future will tell, and I hope Corey wins. <laughs> Yeah, I, after he made his announcement, I checked out the Australian Conservatives website. So it was all ready to go. You could uh, s- sign up for for membership, uh, view the the party's constitution, beliefs, and and prin- and principles. So it'd be interesting to. We might find out in the coming days. It'd be interesting to know how many people have signed up already. Because I've no, I've, I, I know I keep going back to fa- uh, comments that I've seen on Facebook, but yeah. you know these are real people who are commenting. There's a lot of people saying, you know, I've joined the party. This is the first political party I've joined. So uh, it'd be it'd be uh, be interesting if uh, if if Corey does comment on the initial uptake of, of membership because I know I know that for months there's people have been uh, been saying, come on, Corey, do it, do it. You know, for, form a new party. Yeah, people have been very supportive, and you know, ultimately, you know, the online sphere is what matters these days, really, because you know, people. Are more active on Facebook, you know, on comments. So yeah, I mean, um, and the comments show that people were supportive, and that's a good thing. And we knew that. We aren't surprised. We knew people were supportive. We knew people knew who he was. Pe- many people who wanted Corey to win the Senate um, actually wanted him to win. Sorry, actually wanted him to leave the Liberal Party afterwards. Um, so you know, we're not surprised that we are seeing so much support online for Corey. It's also because he would have thought about this for for quite a while because it it is a uh, a huge risk to to start a new party. I mean, you just have to look at the the past six years of this uh, rise and fall of various um, uh, minor parties from the right side of politics in Australia. I mean, there was Catter's uh, party that only lasted uh, a few years. Then, of course, there was Clive Palmer's party that only lasted a few years. We've now got uh, One Nation, which is the dominant uh, minor party on the right, but even they're having some some troubles now. So. Uh, 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 there's not a good sort of track record of of parties rising uh, on on the right. So uh, he yeah he would have I, I believe that he would have you know uh, 
thought about this and I think he has got a plan for success and I definitely uh, think that he's uh, got some substantial money behind him to, to make the party work because it will, uh, in, in politics, you do, you, uh, you do need uh, a lot of money to sort of make an impact as well. Yeah, I mean, there are some um, reports that Gina Reinhardt is on his side. Um, we saw reports that says, you know, on the Sydney Morning Herald, they said um, Gina Reinhardt um, was with Corey while in America and that they were together um, talking about it and that Gina Reinhardt um, will fund the party. Um, I, won't be, I won't be surprised if she does. Um, in fact, I want her to. And, um, you know, um, Corey denied. Corey said, you know, we can't tell you yet who's funding, we don't know yet, but I think Gina Reinhardt will fund the party. And if, if, if she does, she's the richest woman in Australia. If she does, then it'll be very good. Uh, we know that uh, Gina is a, c a conservative warrior. We, uh, f I know yeah. that a, a lot of people have been hoping she'll put some significant money to uh, the conservative side of politics. So I definitely hope those reports are, are true. But of course, Gina is a very sort of private person. So she's sort of, yeah. she, she, uh, she's not likely to tell us um, uh, where, uh, what, she, what she's up to. Yeah, same with Corey. You know, Corey is very reser reserved, and you know, he's he sort of um, keeps things to himself a lot. That's why he said, you know, I can't tell you yet if Gina is going to fund us. Oh well, Corey has been like he, normally he's pretty outspoken, but he's been quiet the last few months because he's been planning this this big announcement. I mean, yeah, uh, he's been bi uh, uh, big in the media obviously since he made the announcement. He went on the uh, Bolt Report on the Tuesday night. He went on Miranda Devine's radio show later that night. He was on. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul Murray live uh, last night, which is uh, which was during the time when they had the rolling blackouts in South Australia. So yeah, so we've got Australian conservatives now, but we've also we've still got One Nation, which, like I said, although they've had some troubles, they they look like doing pretty well in the the WA uh, state election. Um, and there's also uh, other uh, minor parties on the right. There's the Liberal Democrats. Uh, there's the Shooters and Fishers and Farmers Party. And the Christian Democrats are, are st still still around. And so are, even though Bob Day uh, has had to resign, Family First is still around. So there are quite uh, a lot of parties uh, uh, vying for that conservative vote. So sort of, uh, ha ha do you think the right's becoming... Too, cra too crowded out. I mean, especially with the new Senate voting rules, which leads to exhausted votes. Well, first of all, I'm not surprised that the right is becoming too crowded out because, um, you know, what's happening these days, you know, just isn't isn't surprising me that you know people are creating all these right wing parties um, as a response to growing leftism, growing cultural Marxism. Um, but yes, I yes, it is getting crowded, and um, it is a bit. I think it can be a bit regressive on our side because the thing is if you know it's easier if there's a more unity if there's one big party then it's easier to take over um i know that coalition coalition building is possible always um but one nation um one nation is a party that doesn't really i don't think they need um coalitions because i think they can do things well by themselves yes they're having some problems these days um with james ashby but you know um, i think they realized that people know that you know they are getting a bit too um politically correct sometimes um and that's why i think um pauline hansen recently agreed with and uh, stood by um a candidate who said something very controversial about homosexuals um recently and you know she stood by her so i think one nation is slowly learning from what happened with shan julian um, and what's happening with Cor um, with James Ashby, and I hope they are. But yes, ultimately, you know, we are seeing lots of parties, and that can work well. But it might be a big risk if there's too if they're too scattered. Then you know, there really isn't um, a good a, a large force to fight for us. But the left has a, fo a force. The, the left has the Greens. The left has Labour. Um, so that's 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 an issue right now. I recall uh, Ross Cameron saying on Paul Murray, I think this was on Monday night, the reason why Corey decided to start his own party rather than join One Nation is because One Nation is still considered the, the Pauline Hanson party. So if anything 
happen to Pauline, for example, that it that that it just be the end because although Mal- Malcolm Roberts has become prominent as well, it's still well, it's called Pauline Hanson's uh, yeah. One Nation, and it's yeah. and it's sort of um, there's not much infrastructure for the party around around the country. It's still managed by uh, Pauline and a uh, in a circle. Well, I think Corey wants to uh, ha- have a have a have the party have a party with you know branches all throughout Australia and uh, a party machine behind them. He did say that um, the rise of populist parties is a reason why he wants to make sure that a more um, traditional conservative party is there. Um, the Sydney Morning Herald actually mentioned this. Um, many media um, websites mentioned this. That a main reason for Corey to do this is to actually um, sort of as 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 a response to the populist parties. I mean, it's mainly a response to the left, but it was also meant to be as a, a response to the rise of populism. Um, and so, you know, um, I think that reason sort of shows that, you know, Corey is sort of afraid of the new, of the new right-wing parties, um, sort of, he might, might he, he might not necessarily agree with those new right-wing parties. Um, yeah, and as for One Nation again, um, the thing is, I, I did say that they can be successful, but I remembered that um, there are reports that um, many candidates might actually um, do what Corey is doing, sort of, and um, sort of get, become independent um, after getting voted through a One Nation ticket. And Pauline Hanson was going to try and um, install some sort of um, admin fee. So if you leave, you must pay, I think it was $250,000 to the, to the party. Um, so that there, there are there are talks about that sort of um, the, the, that situation where people might sort of abruptly leave the party after getting elected. Um, so you know it's very fuzzy. Yeah, that, that, that's the other difficulty that One Nation's had is uh, of uh, vetting of candidates. Uh, you know, so selecting selecting candidates that are obviously going to be committed committed to the party. I mean, the uh, the Rod. Uh, she's probably glad the the Rod Cullerton uh, saga is over. I mean, he his election was declared uh, invalid, but that whole episode showed that still getting quality candidates is it uh, is quite difficult for them. Well, I think Corey uh, will will probably put in a much more substantial candidate vetting vetting process and probably. Uh, choose uh, choose more sort of um, uh, uh, what uh, what's the word uh, more worldly people so sort of people who've yeah. done, a lot, done a lot in their lives yeah. so he's, he's probably speak, spoken to business people uh, community leaders about being candidates so because I know that at, at, yeah outside of uh, Queensland um, Pauline Pauline Hanson just relies on what uh, on what the other what the other senior people in the states are doing and yeah. takes advice from them. Yeah, I mean, as I said, Corey is a bit more of a traditional conservative. Um, so you know, there is that difference with with One Nation, um, and that was a bit of a disappointment for many people as well. Um, I, I heard people say, you know, um, it turns out Corey, you know, is a bit, as I said, a bit of an elitist. Um, but yeah, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, Oh, I, I do. I I do think One Nation is good, and I want them to win. But again, I do disagree with them when it comes to the economy. When it comes to many economic aspects, um, and so I do. Uh, for me, the ideal is is someone like Corey Bernardi, um, who's pro strong borders, you know, um, anti LGBT agenda, etc., and also more capitalist oriented. So. Yeah, yeah uh, there, there, there is a big difference between One Nation and Australian Conservatives. I mean, if you just look at the beliefs and principles on the Australian Conservatives website, it's it's a very uh, traditional conservative manifesto. So limited government, free enterprise, uh, they support free trade, which is yeah. which is opposed to uh, 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 One Nation, who are who are much yeah. more protectionist. Yeah. Uh, Another value of theirs is uh, self re- self responsibility uh, and individual liberty. So, sort of a much uh, it's it's a much more sort of well grounded in conservative tradition, Australian conservatives, which is sort of um, uh, which is sort of my my uh, what I w- would prefer a conservative party to to be. Because obviously, although One Nation raises a lot of import important uh, issues, yet they they're not good on on economics.
Yeah, I mean, One Nation does support liberty um, to an extent, and One Nation does support um, many of the things the Australian Conservatives support. It's just, yeah, when it comes to the economy, free trade, you know, Pauline Hanson is very, very anti-free trade. Um, and you know, that, that again, that's more of a, that's a bit more of an old, of an old right sort of thing, um, while you know uh, Cory Bernardi and Australian Conservatives, they're more of a traditional right sort of thing, um, again, which is what I prefer. Um, so you know, th there's that difference. So you know, people are saying you know it might end up dividing the right wing who supports protectionism and the other part of the right wing who supports free trade and, and more and a more capitalist approach to global trade. Um, so you know that could be a problem ultimately. But there's also the fact that One Nation is a geographic party. I mean, it's based in Queensland, while Corey's yeah. from South 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 Australia. Yeah. I mean, there is the idea. This is just putting 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 a thought out there that they could have a, a non competition pact. So, say uh, Pauline uh, sticks in Queensland, Western Australia, New South Wales, while uh, Corey focuses on South Australia, Victoria, and Tasmania, where Pauline's not as strong. Yeah, that could happen. Um, I hope not, because I hope, I think Corey will operate in New South Wales, because even Pauline isn't that popular in New South Wales. I mean, New South Wales is a very, is, is, is a state that does rely on free trade. And, you know, it is, I suppose, um, highest GDP, etc. So, you know, Sydney is the global, considered the global city. And, you know, many people are criticizing us for being globalists, for being the global city. But, you know, we do rely a lot on free trade um, and other countries and, you know, the international financial markets, all that um, for our economy. Um, so, you know, I think Corey could be, but Pauline Hanson is very popular when you look at New South Wales um, rural areas um, that were once probably Labour supporters, but who are sick of Labour now for being so progressive and, you know, left wing. Um, so, you know, I think with New South Wales, it's a bit of a, it's a bit complex, but yes, Corey should focus on Victoria because um, I think Victorians are looking for a conservative who can do something about Daniel Andrews and what he's doing right now. And South Australia, similar thing, people are looking for someone who can get South Australia out of this climate rhetoric, this climate politics, and, you know, make sure that as we saw these past few days, they have all these problems with their power supply um, and they want someone who can actually get them some right wing ideas. So I think it'll be good if Corey, it'll be good for Victoria and South Australia if Corey focuses on those two states. Uh, also, I wanted yeah. to uh, talk about, so the party's constitution has been released and it does look as if the the part of the the power in the party is going to be centred around Corey and the people who are on their national executive, which I know uh, some conservatives have criticised is is anti democratic, and that's the same criticism they they also level at One Nation that the power yeah. is concentrated with Pauline. Well, I have heard uh, arguments from other people that you can't have a a minor party which has a democratic structure because then the party. Uh, spends all its time fighting amongst itself instead of fighting fighting elections against other parties, which is yeah. I I do think you need a, a balance between between the two. I mean, you shouldn't have complete concentration of power with one person, but you also need uh, uh, to have people in positions of responsibility to you know make make decisions quickly and make uh, and make him important decisions decisively rather than just have endless debates. Um, I think I would, I think I prefer if Corey has some autocratic power. I think I prefer an autocratic party for now because since they are a growing party, I think it's better to focus on the important things and to focus on, you know, democratic issues. Um, you know, so I, I, I don't mind, I, I, in fact, I support, I would support One Nation and, and Austrian Conservatives more if they were quite autocratic. And One Nation is autocratic, I um, mean, in many ways, with Pauline Hanson up there. Um, well, James Ashby up there too. Yeah, but, exactly, really. yeah, yeah, James Ashby up, up there too. But you know, we are assuming Pauline Hanson is ultimately in power. Um, but you know, I I don't mind some auto autocracy within the party um, because you know we need them to focus on the actual direction instead of focusing on um, democratic issues. You know, um, and Corey won't. He's not a bad person. He, um, he's, he, you know, he he will listen to other people. Um, just yeah. you know, powerfully invested in him more. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think he set up the party uh, with this structure because, you know, he's full of his own ego. I yeah, think because yeah. he, he, he wants the ability to be able to make, make, big decisions decisively and not get bogged down with endless yeah. meetings and conferences and uh, bran branch decisions. So uh, I, I know he'll cop uh, criticism for that, but I just think that a lot of conservatives just need to accept that the party will be structured like that for, for the greater good. And uh, no, this party has really good values and that, that yeah. should be enough for you to get, get behind it. I mean, it's not going to be like the Liberal Party. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's an example of how people are sort of, you know, reaching for the straws, isn't it? You know, I think criticizing uh, Australian conservatives for being, uh, not being democratic, you know, it's, it's a bit like you're deviating from the main issue here. The main issue is their values. You know, that's what, what we should focus on, not their internal structure, really, because, you know, it's it's, it's a bit like the act, the critic, the critics of the party who hate Corey um, are sort of reaching for the straws by doing this. And I just want to say that... Um, with the LDP, if you look at the LDP, um, I'm assuming it's a bit more democratic. Um, oh, no, we're pretty... Uh, the, uh, a lot of the power is centred with our federal executive, so we do have okay. that con concentration of power too. That's good, because I was going to say that, you know, there are some people in the LDP who are, who are a bit more on the progressive side, you know, and, you know, there are some progressives who are joining the LDP, you know, that, because, we, because we have all these left-wing liberal uh, libertarians these days. Um, so I don't want Australian conservatives to become like that. You know, I want them to be who they are meant to be. Because what happened with Catter's party, it was supposed to be a really conservative party, but then a whole bunch of gay activists joined it and really, <laughs> uh, it really watered down its uh, anti-LGBT message, and that was sort of the end of it. That's when Bernard Gaynor left the party and pretty much it all fizzed out from there. So they, they probably will try and, uh, try and hijack Australian conservatives' uh, left, leftist people. They will. And I think, you know, uh, the only way to stop it is to make sure that Corey is authoritarian in, within his own party. You know, just like we want Pauline Hanson to be autocratic to make sure that James Ashby doesn't um, do doesn't do another cata in, the, in, in one nation. Um, so, you know, uh, we want to make sure that Corey Bernardi is also autocratic to make sure that they don't admit. It says in the website, anyway, you have to be a requirement to be a member is you have to be over uh, you have to be this age you have to be you know this uh, uh, a citizen and it also says that you have to um agree with our views you know i think that's a good thing you know that because that means he's telling you you know what if you are a leftist if you are if you are you know not us then you can't come here that's a good thing i think um and that's what we need to make sure that another Qatar's situation doesn't happen in australian conservatives yeah definitely uh, so we might uh, uh, move on from talking about Australian Conservatives and now talk about the consequences for Malcolm Turnbull and the Liberal Party. Yeah. And there's already been the Unshackled reported on some leadership rumblings uh, in, the, in the Liberal Party. Uh, so far, it doesn't look like anything is going to happen, but I, w I would predict that Malcolm Turnbull, his leadership is now terminal. And yeah. Uh, unless the the liberal liberal MPs want to go off a cliff at the next election, they have to replace him. Yeah, I mean, we reported on a possible leadership um, sort of um, uh, contest sort of thing. So that 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 doesn't mean it should have it would happen overnight. And that could happen over a few weeks, over a few months. It depends. Some people are saying, you know, Malcolm will be out before the end of the year. Um, and others are saying, you know, no, he will stay. Um, and others are saying he has actually sort of tried to um, increase, expand his foundations in the party to make sure, with donations, etc., to make sure that he does stay. Um, you know, it could, you know, there definitely, there definitely is a leadership problem in the Liberal Party right now um, with Corey's departure, and you know, Malcolm Turnbull is at risk. That's that's beyond dispute. And, you know, it could turn out, we could have a, another leadership spill. Um, again, I, uh, I'm not sure if I want it or not, because sometimes when you have leadership spills, then you might end up getting the bad person in, you know, with Tony could, Abbott gone. Could you, could you get anyone worse than Turnbull? <laughs> um, I hear there are lots of more left-wing people in the Liberal Party. I think, um, you know, to Malcolm Turnbull at least is um, is more econ economically, you know, right-wing oriented. I hear there are 
people who aren't like that in the Liberal Party, who are economically more left wing than what the Liberal Party should be. Um, so, you know, obviously I would, I would prefer Malcolm over that. I mean, Malcolm, he can be good sometimes. Yesterday he showed us what he's, he's got. You know, yesterday um, he uh, gave Will Shorten a good battering um, with by, by, by criticizing him for, and he used facts, he used actual evidence to, you know, really was a hypocrite. Um, and, you know, that was something, that's something we need from him. That's something we didn't see from him much. Um, that sort of backbone. And we saw that yesterday for a bit. Again, doesn't make things better. We know who he is, but, you know, it's a good improvement. It's a good step in the right direction. Um, but yeah, we'll, we've yet to see what happens to the leadership, but there's definitely some problem in that. Well, a, a lot of people said, oh, he slapped down a, a Bill Shorten in question time was really good. My, sure, it boosted morale about the backbench, but he needs more than a parliamentary yeah. performance to, yeah. to save yeah. his job. I think the two things that make his job secure in the short term is the fact that he gave $1.75 million to the Liberal Party in the last federal election. Yeah. So if they try and get rid of him, he's probably going to say, well, I gave you, you know, all this money, you know, to to help to help uh, f uh, fund the election campaign and get us over the line in the end. And uh, the way you're going to repay me is is sack me. Like, uh, yeah. You know, what what sort of people are you? And they're also. The other, th the other reason why he's, he's safe for now is because uh, he can always threaten to resign uh, from Parliament and cause a by-election in Wentworth, which yes. uh, the Liberals would lose because Wentworth, like, he won, he won the seat, Malcolm, in 2004, but since then it's been redistributed to take in, like, more parts of inner Sydney. So now it's pretty much full of, like, inner city lefties, and the only reason that Liberals hold it is because Malcolm Turnbull's the MB. I mean, if he, if he was to go, it'd fall to Labour or the Greens. It might, it might. You know, the um, uh, that uh, that Western sort of region of Wentworth does include uh, Oxford Street, etc. You know, it does include all those um, leftist, uh, you know, inner city, uh, greeny sub um, suburbs, uh, neighbourhoods within. Um, if he goes... Yes, um, he, they might lose Wentworth. They cannot lose Wentworth. If they lose the eastern suburbs, then that's a very bad direction for them. Um, because, you know, the eastern suburbs are meant to be their stronghold in Sydney, the eastern and the lower north shore and the northern. And if they lose one of their strongholds, then, uh, well, well, their traditional strongholds, then that's a problem. Um, you know, I mean, Malcolm is... I'm not saying he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a conservative and therefore he deserves these principles. I'm not saying he's a progressive. What I'm saying is they can't lose Wentworth. If they do, that's going to be bad for them. Well, if, yeah, if they lose it, then they lose their majority. I mean, they'll yeah. be down to 75 seats, which uh, they'd have to rely on either Kata, Andrew Wilkie, or Kathy McGowan, and they don't want to go to uh, my, minority government. It, it's, it, it's quite interesting how parties, if the, if, if there's a possibility they could lose one seat, then uh, it, it completely clouds their judgment in a whole lot of areas. Yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, some conservatives have said, you know, who cares if they if uh, liberals lose Wentworth? I mean, why would you want a lefty uh, uh, liber liberal MP in the party room? Um, I mean, again, that's a bit of a um, they haven't. That's a bit of a premature thing to say. They haven't thought about it. You know, if they lose Wentworth, you know, that's it's meant to be a stronghold and it's going to be really bad, not just for the liberals, but for the normal, lib the normal right wingers who live in Wentworth, you know, um, the Eastern parts of Wentworth are okay. I mean, they're all, they all support capitalism there, what you would call, um, you know, mod cons, moderate conservatives who live in, in the traditional Wentworth, um, which is with this addition of this expansion that's resulted in the progressives getting in. But it'll be bad for the people in Wentworth as well, because those mod cons, they rely on the Liberal Party's capitalist orientation to stay rich. And that's, that's, and they need to, that's good for them. That's what they need. Um, and if they lose that, if they get a leftist in Wentworth, then all the people living there will, it'll be really, you know, it'll have a really bad impact um, on the on them on their representation. Um, you know, Sydney already has uh, is already suffering with Tanya Plibersek. Um, you know, it's going to be when you have a leftist, a socialist in the financial centre of Australia. That's that's a big problem. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens with that though. 
But yeah, I just don't think in the big scheme of things, uh, lo losing Wentworth is is that great a loss. Uh, we should talk about uh, if Turnbull is to go, uh, if if they do uh, have have the courage, the MPs, to admit they were wrong in installing Turnbull, who who would they replace him with? I don't think they'd go to go back to Tony Abbott because most of them are of the view that he's white to enter uh, Malcolm Turnbull and said some really unhelpful things from the backbench. So I don't think that uh, they'd want to reward him with a uh, uh, with another go. And I also think that he was a failure as Prime Minister the first time around. And the only reason why he's saying these conservative uh, things now is because he wants to be Prime Minister again. I don't yeah. think Tony Abbott's got uh, got a, got a lot of a lot of convictions. Uh, and that's a view shared by Miranda Devine, who said that you know if I don't I don't trust Tony Abbott. I don't believe that he's changed. Uh, other possible replacements are of course uh, Scott Morris and the. Treasurer and Immigration Minister Peter Dutton. Um, none of whom I like. Um, Dutton is okay. Um, Scott Morrison, I don't want. Uh, you know, I, I just don't think there's anyone good in the party to replace Malcolm Turnbull. I mean, they're all leftists now. You know, they, they all have their flaws. Um, Dutton, I suppose, stands out. Um, uh, again, we have to see, um, you know, who's most compatible, who can actually take them through the next election um and it's, it's it's very hard to forecast these things um but yeah i i personally don't i i'm sort of very disillusioned with the liberal party i i want an actual conservative party um so you know i so i sort of don't care really because um i do i ultimately i prefer liberals over labor and i want liberals to win next election in comparison to labor but you know again there won't be a difference. If Scott Morrison comes in, there won't be a difference. If Dunn comes in, there won't be a difference. You know, we'll see, we'll see the exact same procedure anyway. So, yeah. I mean, even if a more conservative liberal uh, uh, liberal MP did take over the leadership, I mean, they they would still still be too afraid to do anything about uh, radical Islamism in Australia. They still wouldn't yeah. be prepared to call call climate change a hoax or yeah. uh, get rid of the ABC. I mean, they they would they still wouldn't you know be prepared to to t take on the the really controversial issues that you know would would trigger the the mainstream media attacking them yeah the the liberal party has caved in to the left a bit too far now you know, it's that's why Corey left that's why it's a bit too that's why he said you know you can't change it that's why we know you can't change it that's why he left um so you know that's why that's why i'm saying you know we won't see much of a difference if no matter who gets in, um, unless of course they they have a very big backbone. That's why One Nation is very valuable because they are anti climate rhetoric, anti climate anti climate policy. They say it how it is. They know it's a hoax. Um, you know, anti immigration. That's great. You know, that's why One Nation is very um, useful for us for the, for the right these days. Yeah. I mean, I published my, uh, I guess you could call it a wish list of uh, issues yeah. which I think a new Australian Conservative Party should uh, uh, should tackle. But uh, on those lists, there is no way that the Liberal Party, no matter who is in charge, would ever go near those issues. I mean, yeah. I mean, they they they're still listening to the the media and the elites. They're not listening to the ordinary people. Yeah, I mean, and if they end up losing key strongholds like you know Wentworth, etc., then you know it's going to get worse for them uh, with with regards to being conservative. And you know, they they as I said, already caving in to the um to the left. Um, you know, we will never we will never see them reaching even close to uh, that list you you said. Um, and you know that's why we want the Australian Conservative to come in and sort of make things right, literally. Um, you know, yeah. So we definitely are living in uh, exciting times. And yeah. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing more about Australian Conservatives, and uh, uh, we'll we'll. We'll know by probably uh, next six months or know whether the Liberals are going to stick with, with Turnbull. Um, but that's all we've got time for on today's show. So thank you, Suka, for being my co-host. Thank you for having me. Uh, before we go for today, we've got a big announcement. Uh, we should announce it now, shouldn't we, Suka? We should, yeah, I think it's good. Yep, so we're, we are going to, on uh, Saturday 
Mar March the 11th, uh, which is the day of the Western Australian uh, state election. The Unshackled is going to be doing a live stream on election night where we're going to uh, watch the results come in, uh, provide commentary uh, and analysis on, on what's happening. So that'll be our first ever live event. So it's very exciting. Uh, we'll, keep you, uh, we'll keep you informed uh, uh, about, uh, about uh, how, that's uh, how that's going to work and um, uh, send, send out uh, reminders to you. So pencil it in in your in your diaries diaries right now because it'll it'll be an exciting uh, I guess we could call experiment for us as well because we we're, yeah. we're, we're we're trying to get the best technology available so so we can have a quality broadcast. So it's it's very exciting. A reminder once again to subscribe to our email list at theunshackled.net slash subscribe. And also, don't forget to consider supporting the show. Uh, you can become a patron on Patreon. You can make a one-off donation via PayPal, or you can also sign up to advertise on this podcast. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the show on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and of course, the video version on YouTube. Also, don't forget to check out theunshackled.net because we're pumping out news uh, quick and fast these days. Uh, so make sure you, you keep, keep checking it out. So thanks once again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.